Morning. Morning, is my mic on? Can you hear me? Not yet. Ah, there we are. Hi. Uh, do you want to find your Bibles or your phone app Bibles? Turn to Matthew 13. So we're going to be looking at two short parables that kind of go together, the pearl of great price and the treasure hidden in a field. And before we read them, I'm going to, I'd like to ask you a question. When was the last time you went all in, absolutely 100% committed to something? Uh, maybe I'll tell you a couple of mine but while, uh, while you think of yours. Maybe it's a work thing or a, a relationship thing. I definitely, definitely went all in to try and get uh, Rachel Griffiths over there to be my wife. That was, that was probably that I remember going all in for that. I remember going all in for a job that I wanted. In fact, I, I thought I'd, I used to be very into athletics. I used to go all in for trying to be as fast as I possibly could. And um, we got a few. Have you got some, uh, Albert, do you want to put the slide up? Of, um, I, want, I really wanted to talk about, about the, the, the women's 4x100 relay team coming up now. Because they were going to win last Sunday at Munich. And then they dropped the baton and they didn't win. However, they are the fastest, fastest ever UK time that a women's 4x100 team has ever recorded. They're amazing. They really are. Um, Dana Asher Smith is famously the, the fastest, but uh, Daryl Nita is fast on her tail. Um, both of them have run under 11 seconds, which is, which is the first time ever in UK history, which is, which is pretty cool. And the men's team did very well as well. They actually went on to win. Uh, the gold in, in Munich last Sunday, and they got the silver at the Olympics. Now, when I was uh, a kid, my guys that I used to look up to was actually the 4x400 team. Here they are. Derek Redmond, Chris Akabusi, John Regis, and Roger Black. Um, I wanted to be like a, any of them would do. They were all incredibly fast and incredibly focused, and they would go, they really would go all in. And they famously beat the American 4x400 team at the 1992 Olympics. They weren't supposed to win, and they put their fastest guy first. They put Roger Black first, and it completely threw off the American team, and they ended up winning for a, for, for a very historic gold medal. So I would look up to these guys, these guys, because they would literally go all in, especially, especially Derek Redmond, the guy on the left. So he was my, he really was who I looked up to. He was a bit quieter, which was me as a younger man, um, and he was, the next year, he was the fastest guy in the UK. He was the fastest guy, and they went to the, uh, the sorry, no, they won, sorry, they won at the World Athletics Championship in 1991. And then in 92, which was the Olympics, Derek Redmond was down. He was very fast in his heats. And in the semi-final, he, if you go to the next slide, he was going down the back straight, and he pulled a hamstring so badly, he just had to pull out of the race. It was, it was terrible. He, he literally went so fast that he pulled a muscle. And that muscle, that finished his career. He didn't race after that. There is a, there's a good end to that story, which we might come back to later in the, in the preach, if you know about Derek Redmond. But um, yeah, I used to look up to those guys massively and go, go all in. And that's basically what these parables are about. So if we turn to Matthew 13... And we're going to start reading. The words will come up behind me as well, Albert, if you can do that. Starting at verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who, when he found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all he had, and he bought it. So just two simple parables, and it's often the way when you prepare for a preach thing, how much, how much can there be on those uh, three verses? So much, so much, and you kind of go out, and then you come back in, and, and so we're mostly talking about the, uh, the pearl of great price this morning, and a little bit of the, um, the parable of the treasure so some context, you can see at the beginning of um, 44, he says again, he starts it with again, because this is within a, a much larger preach that Jesus was doing. So if we go back a few verses, he's preaching to a large crowd on a beach, 
um, uh, so big, in fact, that he had to get in a boat and get someone to like push him away from the shore so that the crowds, a bit like this, I imagine the shore might have been curved like this, and everyone stayed on the shore, and he was in the boat so that people could, could hear him. Um, and he did the, that's where he did the parable of the sower. That's where he did, um, where it starts, the kingdom of heaven is like. And he did the parable of the weeds growing up amongst the wheat. And he does the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast. And then he actually goes into, it says he goes into a smaller room with just his disciples. Verse 36, he left the crowd and he went into a house. And his disciples come too. And that's where he, he starts to explain the weeds parable. And then he tells them these two parables that we're looking at today. Um, and then he also goes on to tell the parable of the nets, which is an odd decision, I've always thought. Why, why, why wouldn't you do the parable of the nets when you're in the boat? Perfect. You've got your visual reference. You're in a boat. You've got nets. He waited until... He got into the house when he was just with his close disciples. And that's kind of the first thing I wanted to say this morning, really, is that, is that Jesus really knows his audience. So these parables and the two that come, that come after are very much for those who already are convinced of who he is. And they want to learn what to do. Right, yeah, we, we've got it. We know you're Jesus. We, we believe that you've been sent by God. Tell us what to do. Rather than the other ones when he's in the boat, which are much more to a, to a larger crowd. The parable of the sower with the, uh, the seeds falling in the good ground and on the path and things like that. Um, so, at the time of Jesus, in, in, uh, which was in the Roman Empire... Uh, pearls were very significant. So basically what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna, to, why, why does Jesus choose a pearl uh, to, uh, as, as a parable, as a metaphor? What, why does he choose that pearl? And so to do that, and then maybe we can find out what would be a, a modern day equivalent of that. So pearls in the Roman Empire were, were massively, massively sought after. Um, in fact, so much so um, that... Um, Oh, where is it? I can't find it now. I'll find it in a minute. Um, they were used as uh, currency. That was it. So instead, when people travel around the Roman Empire, uh, the pearls were so expensive that instead of carrying heavy gold, um, they would carry pearls. Because a pearl that's like, you know, teeny tiny pearl was worth so much gold. And they were called unios because they were so unique. Not, not one pearl is the same. So with pearls, you've got either, you've got farmed pearls or cultured pearls, and you've got um, natural pearls. So I don't know if you know, a pearl is the only uh, jewelry, uh, uh, precious stone that is made within a living thing. It's made in an oyster or a clam. Everything else is a rock, just chipped out of rock. And what happens is a tiny bit of dirt or sand gets into that oyster, and the oyster it feels it um, rubbing, and it's uncomfortable, so it covers it in mother of pearl. And then it covers it again, and then it covers it again, and then it covers it again, and it grows into this beautiful, beautiful white object. Um, it takes years, years and years and years, unless you farm them, in which case you put a massive, great big piece of something in there, and then over like a year, it gets one, just one layer of... of of mother of pearl. So natural pearls are worth way more than, than farmed pearls. And all you could get back then were natural pearls. They took years and years and years to find. Um, and if you were anyone in the Roman Empire, if you wanted to show anyone that you had made it, that you were winning at life, the way you would do it is to cover yourself or your wife in pearls. So they'd have them on their clothes, they'd have them on their, on their wrists, on their ears, and their necklaces. That was the way that you showed people. It's like, it's like that there are equivalent, I don't know, would be a, I don't know, a Gucci handbag maybe, or a, a Rolex watch, or just, just things that are status symbols, essentially. Um, so that's why Jesus chose a pearl, because in that time, um, it was massively, massively sought after. It really was. <clears throat> and, and I guess today, 
I was trying to think what a modern-day equivalent would be. Maybe it's a lottery ticket. If I had a lottery ticket, essentially it came down to money. Basically, money is, is today's equivalent. If I had a lottery ticket and, and I knew the winning numbers for next week and I could give it to you, what would you give me for that ticket? Everything? Everything? If it was, if it was the Euro millions and you'd be getting you know, 100, potentially 100 million pounds. Amazing. Really. So he, the reason he's choosing pearls is, is because those are the, the things of life which attract us, which we like to chase after. And I guess the, the other thing, having talked about the pearl, we then have to talk about the guy who's, who's looking at the pearl in the parable. So it says, Jesus says it, it's a pearl merchant that's looking for the pearl not just some regular guy. So he knows his pearls. He knows what looks good. And he's actively searching for the pearl of great price. That, that's, that's, his, that's what he's doing. He's looking for the most valuable pearl. So I guess the question today, I, 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 think, I think we are all essentially pearl merchants this morning. We're all looking for something. Um, so I'd ask the question, why, why, why are you here? I don't mean here in church. I mean, why are you here? Why are you here on this earth? And I don't mean how you're here. I know you're here because of your, parent, your parents had you. What is your, what is your purpose? What, why, what, is the, what is the reason for you? Do you? Have you found that out yet? Do you know what that is? Are you searching for something? And I think lots of people, they, they do search for meaning in life. And, and, and I would say this morning that, that Jesus has that ultimate meaning. He has that ultimate pearl of great price. And, and sometimes you can, you can end up searching for the perfect job. You can end up searching for the perfect uh, partner. Um, you can end up searching for the perfect church, for the perfect friendship, for the perfect good time had with friends and a bottle of wine maybe. We're all, we're all searching because the way that we are made, God has put that desire in our heart to find satisfaction and peace. And Jesus is saying in this parable that... There are lots of pearls in this world. And they're good things too. That's why they're pearls. They are good things in this world. But there is one. There is one pearl, which is the pearl of great price, that will never let you down, will never disappoint you, will never pretend to be something that they're not. And all of those pearls, when you get to, getting serious for a minute, when you get to your deathbed, you can't take them with you apart from that one pearl. That's the one that you can. You can take that pearl with you. If you believe in Jesus, if you've learned about him, if, you, if you're in a relationship with God and you know him as your father, that's the pearl that you can take with you. A youth pastor uh, once said to me, uh, I can't remember his name, annoyingly, but I was a teenager, and he said, he said, Find out what the most important thing is in, in life is and then make it the most important thing in your life. I thought that was, that was very, uh, very good advice. So what is this pearl of great price? Well, if we look at um, the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4 and um, Jesus is talking to her. and I, Did I put this one up? I think I put this one up. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, in verse 11, sir, the woman says, you've not drawn anything from, for the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? So he's been talking to her about uh, always having to come back to the well and always having to quench her thirst, her desire. And in this case, it's a woman who's quenching her desires in life through lots of husbands. Um, and he says... If you come to me and drink, you will never be thirsty. 
Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, and his sons, and his livestock? Now, what I love about this is that, is that she doesn't know this, but she's talking to the guy who's the expert parable. He's the parable man. So talk about slam dunk. You know, she sets him up. And he says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So he's talking about the pearl of great price. He's talking about the thing that will always satisfy. And then Paul, in Philippians 3 verse 8, he says, he's talking about all of the Lee. He says, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the passing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, and I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ. So he's decided that he, he would gladly give up everything in order to gain Christ and a relationship with him. Uh, uh, it is the most important thing. I've done it. I decided when I was 13 uh, to give my life to Jesus. I decided that it was worth the price. Um, I heard the gospel. I heard about how Jesus had died for me. Um, and, it, and it works. Psalm, Psalm 38, 34, verse 8, it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. And I've done it. You have to you, you give it a go if you've not tried it before. It's very hard to, uh, to think about it from outside of it. You, you don't have to be completely convinced uh, of all of the theology, um, only that, that, that God loves you so much. He really does. Um, so I think there's also a message in here uh, for those who have gone all in in life and they have been hurt. Uh, and you've put all your, you've pinned all your hopes on something, whatever that might be, and you've been let down, you've been disappointed. Um, and it happens, you know, none of us are perfect. Everyone's going to let us down in some shape or form. Um, but the answer is to turn to Jesus and to say, okay, I, I, I do see that all these other pearls, although valuable, are, are nothing compared with a relationship with you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it is the pearl of great price. Now, Derek Redmond, he went all in um, in that race when, he, when he, he got his hamstring and he completely failed in his race and he had to stop. But that's not the end of the story. That We've got a couple of pictures here. What happened was, as he's, he literally got up and he starts limping down the track because he wants to finish the race. Um, and then suddenly this guy starts running on. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you're like, who's that? Who's this guy? It's his dad. His dad ran onto the, onto the, onto the racetrack. And he grabbed him. Go to the next slide. There we go. And he walks with his son across the finish line. It was a very, very beautiful, beautiful moment. And um, it, it, it got, it, it's gone down in the history books, and it's been talked about way more than a gold medal that he could have. He could have won. Um, and I think we're all, we, we can all be a bit like that <laughs> this morning. You know, if you, if you feel like you've given everything and it's just gone wrong, your father, your heavenly father is watching from the sidelines. He's like this. Is he going to fall? Is he going to fall? And the minute you fall, he's going to run on and put his arm around you and help you across that finish line. He really is. That is how our Father works. He loves you so much. He really does. Um, and I wanted specifically to say, that I, I, God, kind of, Holy Spirit wanted me to, to mention, if you've been hurt by a church as well, that can be a real biggie. If you've been in a church and you've, you feel like they've let you down or they've hurt you, um, God's here for you this morning. And, and he wants to tell you that churches are just full of, fallible human beings uh, and to give him another go you know and look to God rather than a perfect pastor or whatever or whatever it is that that you feel like you were let down by um, and then there's also a challenge I think for those of us who uh, 
know this pearl of great price. Um, I think maybe, possibly, there's a drawer in your house uh, that's full of pearls. And that one, that pearl of great price, is in there with all the other ones. And on Monday morning, you might take it out and go, yes, you know, live for Jesus. And then Tuesday morning, you might go, eh, not really feeling it this morning. I'm, yes, yes, I'm going to. That's my job is getting me my ultimate meaning in life. And I think sometimes we can forget how worthless, how, sorry, how priceless um, that pearl of great price is and how worthless in comparison all the other things are. And we need to be reminded of that this morning. We need to take it out again. We need to, to clean it off. Maybe it's covered in a bit of dirt, a bit of grease, and, 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 and realize again the importance of knowing Christ's. I, 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 what, and why? I mean, what is this pearl of great price? Why? I, I think it really does give us our, our reason for following Jesus. Because essentially, essentially we were all, uh, you could say we are all the pearl or the treasure in the ground. And when God found us, he thought we were so beautiful because he created us and he loved us so much that he gave everything to buy us he gave his only son to die on a cross so that we could come back into relationship with him that's the cost that's that's the cost of our relationship with the heavenly father is the death of his son who didn't deserve to die so we've all We've all sinned, or we've all gone our own way, or thought we'd known best. Um, we're all imperfect. So we can't be in a relationship with a holy father. Because a holy God in heaven, the minute he comes into contact with something that's unholy, that makes him unholy too, right? So it's impossible. There is, there is a gap between holy, which is perfect, and, and us. But he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that to be the case. He wants to be in a relationship with all of us as, as adopted sons and daughters. So what's he going to do? Well, we've got to get rid of this, this thing called sin. So he sent his son Jesus as a man to live as a man. And now he was the only one who actually lived and didn't deserve to die because he lived the perfect life. So if anyone was not supposed to die, it's Jesus. But he chose to die so that we don't have to. He took our place so that when we die, we are going to go to heaven, to be in heaven with our heavenly father. That, that's, that's it. That's, what he, that's how much he thinks we're worth. And that's why I think, okay, all right, that I, think, I think that's worth giving my all to. I'd like to decide that that is the most important thing. The most important thing in the world is to live for Jesus, to live as a son of the living God. And we can all do that this morning. If you've not done that already, love to talk to you afterwards. If you've been doing it for a while, carry on doing it. Carry on remembering why it is that we do what we do, that pearl of great price. Um, it really is uh, completely uh, priceless. It really is. Um, just as I finish, do you want to come on the bank and come up? I'm just going to check if I've not forgotten anything. Yeah. And then the treasure hidden in a field, uh, the main point from that parable, although it's the same kind of thing, the guy finds the treasure, he hides it again so that no one else finds it, and then he goes away and he sells everything he has so that he can, he can buy that field. Um, I think there's something significant in, in the person... Uh, He's, he's looking. He has to look for that treasure. If you've got a field, and it's a big field, it's going to be a bit of a search. And I think um, it's important to search. It really is. And to try and find what's important in life. And God wants us to search because it's, it's important. So if you're searching this morning, I, I, I just pray that you would, you, would, you would find it, that it would be revealed to you. It's so important. Um, and once you find that treasure... Don't let it go. You, you, you can't let it go. 
Uh, and it's times like this when we, when we remember how important it is. We can worship God. We can hear from his words um, and just put that pearl of great price back in its, in its rightful place. So I'm going to hand over to Rach. And we're going to worship in response. This is a 